we're looking at passing additional data to callback functions. It sounds complicated and perhaps initially it is, however it's a very simple concept once you get your head around it and it's definitely well worth learning. So if you'd like to see it in action, keep watching. Okay, so if you've seen my last video, you'll know that I was writing a scrapey spider to scrape categories and locations, cities, on Yelp, which is a listings directory. And you'll know that I was scraping 20 results per page, and there were nine pages, and I was visiting each link to extract telephone number and the company website URL. So without further ado, I'm not going to show you any more on the actual Yelp site because I've covered that in previous videos. So yeah, please watch that and uh, I hope you enjoy that. So one of the key points of that video was using meta with response to pass data between the functions or methods. Um, so. What I found was the scrapey documentation, and although it didn't explicitly spell out what I was wanting to do, which was pass three of my uh, variables from my pass function down to my fetch details function, it does show enough detail here for me to be able to complete my code and migrate from using meta to using cb underscore kwargs. cb, I imagine stands for callback, and kwargs is keyword arguments, kwargs. kwargs crops up in Python programming in general. So here we go. Let's have a look at my code. So if you go to scrapey5, on my GitHub page, you'll see that I have items which worked with my first code, which was no meta. Then I wrote meta, which was the main focus of the previous video. And now I'm writing or have written Yelp Spider. So Yelp Spider, which is my full working version, refer to that. And that requires my underscore classes.py, which is this, which before we get into CB underscore KWAGs, I'll just show you this. What I've done is I've converted all of the X paths inside as far as the end parentheses. I've converted those into variables and then I reference the variables in my spider. So if you look at Yelp dot spy, sorry, Yelp spider dot py, you will see where previously much of the code was going way off the edge of the page. And I didn't want to start using backslashes everywhere because that could have also broken my code and just got messy. So what I've done is I've used my class names dot v link, my class names dot v container, my class names dot v company name, and I've done import my class names. Pyts. That should say puts. Sorry, I'll fix that. I don't like typos. Right. So Yelp Spider. We will now look at what the difference is. The difference is here and previously I had meta equals you can see it's there grayed out I left it in just for comparison and I've just split up request into two lines so request lowercase equals request so that's scrapey request absolute URL which I've created up here I've just joined the link to the uh, to the main URL, the domain name and the, the the initial start URL. Okay, so cb underscore kwargs equals, and then we have a dictionary. So key 
value key value key value and so on and that actually goes well it goes along to here so what I've done is link logo URL and company name which have been extracted link remember this link logo company name um, link logo oh, sorry company name logo and obviously link which is behind that as you can see because I've got the little pointy hand um, this is my main code in Atom where I've written it so identical to what you just saw on github and right well you've seen you, you can look at my code you can copy the the example of using ah so I've one last thing here callback keyword arguments and that's inside the pass function pass callback keyword arguments and then I'm retrieving them from within inside the next function so off we go to fetch detail function which is here and then within that function I'm just retrieving link logo company name link logo company name and I've also within this function which is the detail page I've also extracted the company website and telephone number so three values sorry is that one two three yeah three values from pass two values from fetch and then all five of those values are then inside the curly braces and they are being yielded yield then sends them to the pipeline which sends them to the feed export which puts them into the csv and if you'd like to see the csv three two one go there we go and i've added in the next page code so <laughs> we won't go into that too much but um i've actually got here we go look page 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 fourth page uh -uh. Really? meta one word cb underscore k works yeah obviously that's obviously a little bit harder to type or remember but the benefit is when you get to your next function you don't have to do response dot meta dot get dot you see i had to do all those three lines there when i was using meta well when i use cb underscore kwags it's already inside here and then you just use the variable names inside the prints inside the curly braces when you want to yield so hopefully that's clear um yeah copy my code from github try it hope you find it useful so this video was about cb underscore kwags and also i demonstrated that you can put your very long class names very long class names into a variable and then you can use the variable in your code which makes it much more readable and pep8 compliant add xpath my class names dot v company name so that there is the same as all of this and you see it was just a massive long class name so there we go cb underscore kwags and storing class long class names in variables for your selectors thanks for watching and don't forget to uh what is it Ah uh, yeah, subscribe. So see ya.